Hi. One area of cryptocurrency that is getting a lot of attention is DeFi or decentralized finance. This refers to financial services using smart contracts, which are automatically enforceable agreements that do not need intermediaries such as a bank or a lawyer and instead use online blockchain technology. In this video, we'll tell you more about what DeFi is, the advantages and disadvantages, and how and where DeFi is used. Watch the video till the very end. We have a lot of useful information for you. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like it. Decentralized Finance is a decentralized, public and trust-free ecosystem of financial applications and services based on public blockchains, predominantly Ethereum. The DeFi ecosystem covers all aspects of financial services and transactions, including lending, borrowing, and trading within decentralized structures. Any internet user can interact with the ecosystem and manage assets through peer-to-peer -peer and decentralized applications. If Bitcoin is a peer-to-peer e-money -peer e system, then DeFi is a peer-to-peer -peer system of electronic financial instruments. A decentralized financial ecosystem can provide anyone with access to traditional financial services, freeing them from the need of intermediaries and lowering entry barriers. DeFi applications and services are potentially useful for residents of countries with underdeveloped or unstable economies. DeFi services are also in demand in developed countries, especially in the areas of credit, investment, and the development of new revenue models. DeFi has no centralized management structures. The rules for business operations are written in a smart contract. Once the smart contract is up and running, the DeFi application can operate independently with little or no human intervention. The source code of DeFi applications is open for auditing, allowing any user to understand the functionality of the contract or identify box. All transaction activity is public, transactions are pseudo-anonymous by default. Most DeFi applications are available to any internet user. The DeFi system is inclusive. Anyone can create an app and use it. Unlike the traditional financial sector, there are no supervisory controllers or accountants that require complex forms to operate. Through wallets, users interact directly with smart contracts. The DeFi ecosystem provides a flexible user experience. If the user doesn't like the application interface, they can apply a third-party interface or create their own. Smart contracts are like an open API for which anyone can create applications. New DeFi applications can be created by combining other DeFi products. This DeFi feature resembles a model in which a particular structure can be assembled in various combinations. The advantages of decentralized financial services have been known in the market for quite some time. These include decentralization. DeFi tokens allow for transactions between users using multiple computers of other participants and the absence of the human factor. Decentralized finance operates based on smart contracts, which eliminates the human factor. Transparency can also be mentioned. The DeFi marketplace is based on source code. All transaction information is always available to any user. Therefore, such applications will easily pass a fair audit. The main advantage of DeFi services is hidden in the name itself, decentralization. It ensures that control of the ecosystem is evenly distributed among multiple players. There is no excessive regulation, transactions are transparent, fast in execution, and there is no long chain of intermediaries. This is convenient, for example, in lending. There is no intermediary bank, so the one who gives a loan does not have to share the profits with the bank, which takes deposits at one interest rate and gives loans at much higher rate. There is no such gap in DeFi lending. DeFi services are driven by smart contracts and voting. Smart contracts allow the rule of law to be established in the ecosystem to create clear rules of the game. Open source. As with blockchain itself, services that use open source protocols are more trustworthy. They can be tested, they can be refined, they can be used in other services. Stablecoins are cryptocurrencies whose value is tied to an underlying asset. Stablecoins are backed by fiat currencies, baskets of currencies, cryptocurrencies, physical assets, or a combination of these assets. Stablecoins backed by the US dollar is effectively the right to claim fiat collateral from a centralized repository. The value of dollar-linked stablecoins is secured by the issuer itself 
and their use often involves AML KYC procedures. There have already been cases where the accounts of stablecoins holders have been frozen and closed. Project MarketDAO, for example, offers a different model of stablecoin. It is a smart contract platform based on Ethereum. It is the basis for a decentralized DAI stablecoin. The DAI issuance scheme can be compared to the issuance of money backed by gold. The difference is that other cryptocurrency is used instead of gold. The user sends some amount of EDH or other ERC20 tokens to a smart contract which issues the token. This type of smart contract is called a collateralized debt position. The DAI tokens created represent collateralized debt to MarketDAO. MarketDAO uses two tokens. In addition to DAI, it is also a maker utility token. Similar to gas in Ethereum, MKR acts as kind of fuel. It is used to pay commissions for the use of smart contracts. After the commission is paid, MKR tokens are burned, thus supporting demand. MKR has a governance function. The tokens is used to vote on a key aspect of the project's survival and functioning, such as risk management, as well as the platform's business logic. Every MKR holder has the right to vote and create a new proposal, and the proposal with the highest number of votes automatically receives the status of important, affecting the further development of the project. One of the popular scenarios for using DeFi is to obtain loans without a trusted party or intermediary in the form of a bank or corporation. Non-custodial lending protocols use smart contracts to reduce counterparty risk and lower transaction costs. MakerDAO is one of the first applications of its kind. MakerDAO was followed by other protocols Compound, Fulcrum, Avi. Compound and Fulcrum create pools of capital allowing users to lend or borrow crypto assets, including DAI, USDC, ETH, and others. When choosing a protocol, not only the interest rate should be considered, but also other factors including the risk of certain smart contracts loan collateral and the liquidity of the pool. A decentralized exchange is a blockchain-based exchange that does not store user funds or personal data on its servers and act solely as a matching platform for orders to buy or sell assets. Decentralized exchanges offer a new model for trading and exchanging assets, eliminating KYC procedures, dependence on the intermediary and oligopoly. The, one of the most successful and actively developing decentralized exchanges is Uniswap, which combines trading and lending and borrowing options. DY Day X providers users with summary data on spot prices and liquidity of credit transactions on many exchanges. Other popular DAX and protocols include IDEX, ZeroX, Airswap, Bancor, Kyber, Paradax, Radar Relay, Loopring. Prediction markets are platforms that allow you to bet on the results of events, games, elections, and others. Many jurisdictions prohibit gambling and betting on certain events including elections, sports, court outcomes, and other controversial events. Prediction market platforms and applications rely on the wisdom of the crowd to determine the likelihood of certain outcomes. Current scientific research evidence supports the notion that large numbers of people always predict the consequences of particular events with greater accuracy than individual experts. Augur is a peer-to-peer -peer prediction marketplace platform where anyone can place bets. The Augur protocol allows you to buy and sell shares of potential profits. The Numerai platform is a hedge fund that uses AI to find the most efficient ways to trade securities. The fund's employees, data scientists and analysts create algorithms to predict trades and bet on their predictions using NMR tokens. The amount of remuneration is determined by the accuracy of the prediction and the amount of the bet. Protocols for issuing synthetic assets and derivatives through smart contracts are being created. UMA is developing a derivatives platform to provide financial products with standardized contracts. The Synthetics team is developing a protocol to enable the creation and release of synthetic assets. Tokenized securities platform decentralized the process of issuing or creating securities, which in the traditional finance sector requires the involvement of intermediaries, such as investment banks. The equivalent of a security market in the DeFi sector is the market for tokenized securities. STOs involve the issuance of digital assets in full compliance with legal requirements, which provides a higher degree of investor protection and reduces the regulatory risk for issuers. 
While ICOs typically offer utility tokens to participants, STOs issue tokens that have the properties of securities and meet securities law requirements. They are typically backed by assets on the right to receive a portion of the profits of the issuing company, can be an investment, debt instrument, derivative, or digital asset share, and as the name implies, are generally recognized as securities. The advantage of the security token is the ability to divide the underlying asset into smaller units which makes it more liquid and accessible to investors. For example, instead of investing in the purchase of an apartment for subsequent rental, an investor can buy a token that represents a share in such an apartment and entitles the investor to receive a proportional share of income from renting it out. Moreover, despite the low liquidity of real estate, as an underlying asset, the liquidity of tokens can be high. Today, many platforms provide users with tools to issue tokenized securities, validate subsequent transactions, transactions, interface, and functionality to interact with investors and conduct corporate events such as buybacks, dividend payments, voting, and much more. Although the asset management segment of the DeFi sector is relatively small compared to this area in traditional finance, several projects are offering decentralized solutions such as Melon. Its users can manage their own and other assets in the form of ETH and ERC-20 tokens. The management of Melon protocol is also decentralized. It is done by the community, not the board of directors. Another investment solution in SAT protocol, which allows the creation of SATs, ERC-20 tokens representing a set of underlying assets. This model resembles EDF investment in traditional finance. An example of a DeFi project that provides an escrow service is Arwen. An Arwen user can trade on centralized exchanges without depositing funds on them. Arwen enables traders to gain secure asset to the liquidity of centralized exchanges. At the same time, users have no reason to worry about threats of hacker attacks. The systematic risks in the DeFi sector are liquidity and credit risks. Another problem with DeFi systems that use cryptocurrencies as collateral is volatility. If the price of underlying assets locked in a CDP drops rapidly, there is a massive liquidation of assets, and the system can collapse. Currently, to mitigate these risks, DeFi protocols are trying to provide loans with an excess amount of assets, which has a downward impact on the price of these assets. While dealing with smart contracts in DeFi eliminates the need to trust a human, there remains a need to trust the smart contract code which is written by a human. Decentralized finance is finance where there is no specific body responsible for what happens in the ecosystem. The basic principle of DeFi platforms is decentralized governance based on the assumption that all players in the ecosystem have a stake in its prosperity and will therefore make decisions based on their economic benefit. But that kind of thing might not work. It is not just about blatantly malicious actions aimed at destroying the ecosystem or seizing control, but also about the unwillingness of ecosystem players to participate in the development of the service in any way. This is a case where indifference is equivalent to malicious actions. Control of development is in the hands of the team. This flow is not in our hand in all DeFi services because many platforms involve collaborative work with users on improvements, but many face it. In particular, problems arise at the point of delegating responsibility to the community. The hype around the DeFi market, any hype plays both to help and against the market. An overheated market will sooner or later burst. The situation is very similar to the ICO bubble in 2017. On the other hand, if we follow the well-known Gardner chart, the bubble will be followed by a fall, followed by a smooth growth and real application of technology. Thank you for watching this video. Check out the channel for more videos.